Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation. This presentation related to the subject of uh, fundamentals of the manufacturing process. Uh, this presentation is based on the uh, advantages and uh, the limitations of uh, the manufacturing process and uh, the process specific uh, advantages and limitations uh, will be talking about here. So, we know that uh, the one of the uh, means the most common manufacturing processes include uh, like casting process, forming process which are deformation based, machining processes, uh, welding process and uh, regenerative processes. So, these are a uh, very broad group of the uh, processes because in each of the category we have a large number of the uh, processes. These are uh, you can say the broad group of uh, the processes. Uh, in uh, casting processes what is needed to uh, manufacture a product that first the raw material is melted and then to clean uh, the impurities from the molten metal uh, like the treatment of the molten metal is carried out where in like degassing, fluxing uh, etcetera kind of treatment which are done. Thereafter impurities are filtered if they are present. So, filtration is another step and then filtered molten metal is poured into the mold. So, pouring of the molten metal into, into the mold followed by pouring into the mold and then the solidification of the uh, molten metal results in the casting and once the casting is solidified uh, it is taken out uh, rejection uh, or you can say ejection not rejection uh, ejection. Uh, from the uh, the mold and then cleaning and fettling etcetera as per the process which is done. So, uh, if you see uh, this process, uh, this process uh, these are the steps and uh, uh, to uh, uh, from the capability point of view of this process. This process can uh, this is uh, this process offers the fastest route fastest uh, way or fastest route for manufacturing a, a product or to get the desired shape. Uh, but the surface finish and the tolerance which are achieved by this process are not good. Uh, so, uh, the, this is the fastest route because we melt and we get the desired uh, size and shape, but uh, this uh, finish and the tolerance which is achieved is not very good. Uh, this uh, casting can be used for making the products of very small size, maybe of a few grams to the very large size. Uh, maybe few tons also like 100 ton, 200 ton castings are also made uh, and very fine details can also be uh, achieved fine details in the products uh, can be uh, can be realized and uh, so the quite good aspect ratio means the the height to the thickness or the width of the slots and the groups which can be achieved uh, is very good. So, aspect ratio which can be achieved is also high. So, means we can say it can be used for uh, the making components of very thin sections of few mm to the very heavy thick sections uh, may be in meters also. So, uh, uh, these are uh, some of the very positive sites uh, related with this process to 
see more details related with this. This process is offers the shortest route for manufacturing a product like shortest route to get uh, the complex shapes uh, with the internal features through uh, uh, holes or the blind holes or any other geometry of that kind. Uh, another important thing mechanical properties of the material do not affect the success of this process. The more uh, because whether it is material is hard or tough or very strong or very low ductility or of very high ductility that does not affect the, the processing capability of the casting to get the desired size and shape. So, mechanical properties do not affect or do not limit the capability of this process and uh, compatible for custom batch and mass. Uh, productions. So, this is important uh, we can make a very large size casting in a, uh, a single casting of very large size or we can uh, make a few number of components, components like a batch of 10 or 50 number of products can be made by the casting um, economically at the same time the process can also be used for uh, the mass production purpose. So, that is the another good feature related with the casting that process is compatible for the custom made products or customized products or for the batch batches of the different uh, sizes and for mass production purpose. Uh, like this uh, process is therefore, very commonly used in the casting in casting industry for making the wheels, for making the piston rods, case uh, um, engine blocks etcetera and uh, the compatible for very few of uh, for, for very fine dimensions to the very large size dimensions uh, like say the components may be of very small size in, in mm uh, or uh, sections may be of very small size in mm or in very large size in uh, uh, meters or in uh, tons and this is common method for making the composite materials also uh, like uh, the ester casting or uh, rio casting is one of the route where uh, the molten metal uh, where, where, where casting is used for preparing the composite material. So, in this method what is done uh, basically uh, the molten metal is uh, maintained at a, at a uh, correct uh, temperature so that uh, there is a mushy zone wherein like say uh, 30 percent solid and uh, 70 percent of the liquid. So, this is the two phase zone state which is normally used like 20 to 30 or 40 percent of the solid and the remaining liquid. So, in this uh, condition uh, the, the particles that we want to reinfo reinforce uh, in, in the casting uh, they are fed in uh, with the help of uh, a steerer uh, this molten metal is steered and then we feed in the, uh, the ceramic uh, the particles or any other particle which is to be reinforced. So, that it gets distributed into the uh, into the mass or in, in this semi solid uh, metal and then it is allowed to solidify and that is how uh, the, this uh, casting is also used for uh, making the composites. Uh, all the composites can be made using other roots like uh, uh, the powder metallurgy and uh, um, uh, there are various uh, methods for making the uh, composite materials. Now, coming to the uh, limitation of the process, uh, the limitation is that uh, we, it is required that uh, for this process it is necessary that the material is brought to the molten state. So, melting of the material is mandatory and for that purpose it is necessary that uh, uh, the melting point of the material uh, must be reasonably uh, uh, low or if it is too high then it will uh, make uh, the melting of the material difficult and uh, that is why uh, the high melting point materials are found difficult to process to be processed by the casting process like difficult for high melting temperature metals. And uh, at the same time the, the surface finish which is achieved uh, by the casting process is uh, is not that good it requires a secondary processing in form of the machining and uh, at the same time tolerance is also not good and therefore 
to achieve the close control over the dimensions to have the close uh, control over the tolerance uh, of the manufactured product the machining becomes uh, important uh, as per the uh, requirement. Uh, then the possibility of the internal and external defects. Uh, we know that uh, the molten metal will be solidifying. So, if the gases remain get trapped or impurities uh, are passed into the uh, uh, with along with the molten metal they get into the mold then they will be present in form of porosity or the inclusions. So, which will be leading to the internal defects at the same time uh, like uh, mm, the formation of the cracks due to the high uh, residual tensile stresses can lead to the development of the cracks in the uh, surface at the surface of the castings. And another important thing tendency of the interaction with the ambient air. We know that whenever the temperature of the metal is increased it becomes active to the atmospheric gases and with the increase in temperature uh, it can absorb or it can dissolve more uh, amount of the gases in the liquid state as compared to the solid state. So, the differential solubility in the liquid and solid state leads to the uh, problem of uh, the porosity if the gases are not uh, uh, they do not find enough opportunity to come out of the casting during the solidification um, and uh, the, these gases also sometimes react with the molten metal uh, and if uh, these do not float over the surface of the molten metal during the solidification and uh, then they may get remain trapped into the castings and that uh, will be leading to the defect often needs machining and uh, process machining process uh, processing of the casting by machining and uh, the heat treatment. Uh, we know that uh, since the control over the dimensions and surface finish which is achieved in the casting uh, is not very good. Therefore, to achieve the desired degree of surface finish and close control over the dimensions uh, the machining uh, becomes important as per the functionality or as per the requirement of the service. Sim similarly, heat treatment is of the casting is also carried out to enhance the characteristics and properties of the castings because uh, in as cast conditions casting offer somewhat poor mechanical properties and uh, therefore to enhance the uh, properties of the casting sometimes uh, uh, the heat treatment is also carried out and uh, the chemical and metallurgical heterogeneity is uh, also exist in the castings that is another side it is uh, more uh, of the technological uh, 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 point related with the casting like whenever uh, the solidification of any casting takes place we find that the pure metal solidifying solidifies fast and gracefully the impurities or the alloying elements uh, will be segregating or will be moving towards the center and at the end what we find that uh, all the impurities have got uh, segregated at the center. So, it starts with the, the purest metal at the boundary uh, and then impurity concentration keeps on increasing up to the center. So, more of the segregation uh, takes place in the cast components and that in turn leads to the uh, chemical and mechanical uh, heterogeneity in the uh, properties and the composition of the casting. So, to uh, so th this is a inherent feature of uh, the casting process where the micro level um, uh, heterogeneity uh, always uh, exists and sometimes even macro level uh, heterogeneity is also found in the castings. Now, coming to the another process which is a forming. So, in case of the forming, forming is uh, uh, is a deformation based manufacturing process, deformation based uh, manufacturing process where normally compressive force is applied for plastic uh, deformation. And, uh, uh, in order to achieve the desired size and shape. Uh, but uh, th since this process uses uh, uh, the plastic deformation 
uh, to achieve the desired size and shape and using those, those uh, and the nature of the application of these forces is such that it cannot really help to achieve the very complex uh, shape, very high aspect ratio geometries and uh, therefore, this process is found good for simple shapes. This is one. This uh, it, this process offers means this category of the process offers the high volume production rate. Uh, generally, the deformation is associated with the closing of the discontinuities and the defects if they are present in the material. So, basically it uh, eliminates impurities, uh, defects and discontinuities uh, if they are present under the compressive plastic deformation conditions. Uh, these uh, are eliminated uh, from the uh, raw material. So, uh, elimination of the defects like pores or uh, um, uh, like uh, inclusions are also uh, broken down. Uh, so, um, these are uh, uh, these are made to be discontinued under the deformation forces uh, under the uh, plastic deformation and uh, at the same time uh, this uh, results in the uh, uh, plastic deformation causes the work hardening of the material. So, work hardening uh, leads to the increased strength strength and the hardness of the material. So, basically property enhancement takes place in the products which are made uh, by the deformation based processes and uh, this in turn also leads to the high strength to weight ratio. Uh, this also helps to increase the uh, as, uh, achieve the high strength to uh, weight ratio and these uh, features are therefore exploited in making a uh, number of the components for automotive sector. So, if we see uh, here the advantages uh, the forming processes offer high volume production rate, improved mechanical properties due to the work hardening associated with the deformation based processes in forming and the internal discontinuities and defects are closed under the effect of the deformation and therefore, reduce the internal defects and the compressive residual stresses. Another advantage is the development of the compressive residual stresses since this process. Uh, whenever the deformation takes place uh, by processes like uh, the rolling or the contour rolling here the surface layer deformation is more as compared to the, the core region and this in turn leads to the, the presence of the compressive residual stresses. And these compressive residual stresses uh, actually increase the uh, capacity uh, to take up the stresses. These uh, compressive residual stresses are considered to be favorable uh, due to the two regions. One, they increase the tensile load carrying capacity of the product being made capacity and they also improve the fatigue life of the product. So, because of these two regions um, uh, the component uh, made by the forming process deformation based process they will be leading to the uh, improved fatigue life and uh, increased tensile load carrying capacity and uh, that is uh, considered to be favorable which in turn helps to make the product by the forming processes of the lighter in weight because of the high strength weight to weight ratio and increased load carrying capacity easy automation in these processes and close control over the properties is achieved because uh, we can regulate the extent of the deformation followed by uh, we can adjust the extent of deformation that we want in each step thereafter we can uh, use the post uh, uh, forming heat treatment process to adjust the structure and properties as per requirement. So, the control over the properties is very good at the same time high strength to weight ratio 
is achieved because this process through work hardening helps to achieve the higher strength for the same mass of the metal and uh, therefore a strength to weight ratio which is achieved by the components made uh, using the um, forming processes or deformation based processes that becomes uh, quite good and uh, but there are certain other issues and the limitations related with the forming processes. So, uh, these limitations of the forming processes uh, include like uh, anisotropic structure and properties limited to the simpler shapes because uh, the deformation process really cannot help to achieve very complex shape uh, and very high aspect ratio uh, uh, sections cannot be made with the complex geometrical features uh, and therefore, post machining. Uh, 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 post forming machining operations or secondary processing is needed to achieve the desired size uh, and uh, the shape as well as features and uh, therefore, it needs machining to achieve the required finish and the tolerance. The finish and tolerance which is achieved with this process is also not that good because uh, especially when uh, the hot uh, forming based processes like uh, hot rolling coal uh, and uh, hot forming hot forging is used. Uh, during the processing material will be expanding at high temperature and uh, then if when it cools down the shrinkage takes place. So, the this uh, changing dimensions of the component due to the heating and subsequent cleaning uh, in case of the hot forming process especially makes the control over the dimensions difficult and uh, especially at the same time increase in temperature also leads to the increased oxidation tendency of the metal and uh, which uh, uh, reduces the surface roughness of the metal and therefore, uh, the machining is needed so that the required finish and the tolerance can be achieved. Uh, difficult uh, control of the process parameter since uh, the process is deformation based. So, we need to control the temperature of the metal which is being deformed, we need to control the rate at which it is being deformed uh, and uh, inappropriate control over the temperature as well as the rate of the, as well as the rate of deformation will lead to the development of the surface defects uh, onto the surface. Uh, of the component which is being made by the forming process and which will lead to the simply rejection or uh, the product with the undesirable characteristics and the properties. Uh, another important point uh, uh, related to the limitation is that uh, uh, the mechanical properties namely yield strength uh, and ductility affects the success of the process. And normally whenever work hardening takes place the strength and hardness increases, but at the same time the ductility of the work hardened component comes down. So, the products which are made using the forming process may be experiencing the localized loss of the ductility as well as toughness. So, we need to be very careful if the um, application needs, if application of the, the component made by the forming processes need uh, the toughness as well as the ductility uh, then in, in those cases we need to be careful uh, to avoid any premature failure. I will explain little bit more the anisotropic structure and the properties of the form component. Uh, we know that uh, in the deformation we apply either we apply pressure uh, for causing the deformation or we apply impact. So, in case of the pressure and in case of the impact, in case of the impact the deformation is not uh, uniform throughout the section like the surface layers will be deforming more as compared to the inner core material. While it is expected that deformation in case of the in, in those cases where pressure is applied is by and large uniform, but is, is still the deformation is more experienced at the surface as compared to the inner core material of the, the component which is being deformed to get the desired size and shape and because of this differential deformation more deformation at the surface and less at the core. So, because of this uh, the core remains uh, soft and uh, the this uh, becomes uh, hard and because of the increased hardness. So, this lead simply leads to the uh, so this simply leads to the variation in properties of the material like if you measure the properties from the surface to the depth. So, from the surface 
to the core of the material we may we may find that there is a continuous drop in the hardness uh, and uh, strength of the material uh, with the increasing depth from the surface. So, with this kind of the trend the, the differential uh, property vary this uh, the property variation is attributed uh, to the difference in the work hardening behavior. Another important thing which is observed is uh, uh, during the deformation based processes material is uh, forced to flow in a particular direction which is called longitudinal direction and uh, that uh, due to the application of the force material flows in one particular direction. So, the direction in which material flows we find much better strength as compared to the direction perpendicular to that. So, longitudinal direction, direction in which the grains will be flowing, uh, the strength is found to be much better as compared to the strength is high in longitudinal direction or the direction, direction in which the flow of the uh, grains take place during the uh, deformation longitudinal and the transverse, transverse direction is this. So, the properties in the transverse direction uh, uh, means the direction perpendicular to the, uh, the flow of the grains, the perpendicular the direction in which the grains have flown under the effect of the external forces that direction is the transverse direction and in that direction the strength and uh, strength is found to be uh, lower than the longitudinal direction. So, this is another aspect. So, while designing uh, the manufacturing process or while deciding the direction in which the flow is to be achieved we need to uh, consider the way by which uh, the material will be uh, subjected uh, during the service. Uh, coming to the uh, another machining process, uh, another uh, manufacturing process is the machining one. Uh, we know that in case of the machining, we take the stock material like this and uh, using the suitable cutting tool, uh, the unwanted material or unwanted extra material like say uh, this is the unwanted, uh, this is the shape which is to be achieved. So, the unwanted extra material will be removed by, so this hatched portion is the portion where from material is to be removed. Say this is the turning process, this is where phasing will be done, this is the turning region and this is the region where turning is to be done. So, uh, when this is applied what we get, we, we get very close control over surface control over the surface finish. This is one and very close uh, control over the dimensions. So, very close tolerance can be maintained using the machining process. That is another that is why most of the formed component or the cast component are processed through the machining so that the desired uh, control over the dimensions and the uh, surface finish can be achieved. Uh, at the same time very complex geometrical features, geometrical features can be achieved by machining which is otherwise uh, not so easy to be made in case of the casting and forming with the such uh, precision as well as the good surface finish. So, the complex geometries can be achieved, uh, but uh, the process has the limitation of uh, uh, the low uh, production rate because the material is removed sequentially one by one. So, it takes long to achieve the desired size and the shape and uh, there is a loss of metal worth material whatever is removed uh, is lost in for is lost and cannot be used further for any other useful purpose uh, and therefore, the metal loss uh, takes place uh, very skilled uh, 
worker or machinist is needed for the machining purpose and uh, uh, high initial investment on the machine tool is needed, high initial investment on machine tool is needed to get uh, uh, to perform the uh, machining purpose. Uh, so, these are um, some of the limitations at the same time we know that to facilitate the machining of a material it is necessary that tool penetrates into the work piece, but that penetration will be possible uh, only if the tool is harder than the work piece. If the work piece itself is harder than the tool then it will not allow any kind of penetration and that is why the, the work piece of high hardness they offer uh, resistance uh, they make the machining difficult. So, high hardness materials make uh, machining difficult by the conventional process. This is another one. So, high hard uh, means the materials of the very high hardness cannot be easily processed using the um, machining process. So, uh, the advantage side very good surface finish, very close control over the dimensions and very complex shapes can be produced and uh, it is capable to produce very high aspect ratio features which uh, otherwise cannot be made using the uh, like forming and uh, the casting processes and the variety of uh, surface features like the flat, curved or mixed of the various profiles can be easily made. So, these are the advantages and these are the uh, disadvantages and the limitations associated with the Mm, machining processes. Coming to the welding processes, yeah, welding, uh, you know, the welding uh, or you can say the joining processes, there are three variants in the joining processes uh, like uh, the solid state joining processes, solid and liquid state joining processes, and uh, the liquid state joining processes. So, liquid state joining process where uh, the components to be joined need to be brought to the molten state with the application of the heat. In case of the solid liquid joining processes, uh, what we do? The, the components to be joined are just heated so that the material low melting point material can be filled in. So, the process is like uh, shouldering and brazing fall in this category. While in case of the solid state joining processes, the components are maintained in the solid state and the application of the force helps to make the, to have the metallic continuity as well as or we can use the processes like uh, the diffusion where cleaned polished surfaces are kept under the pressure at high temperature so that the diffusion across the interface takes place to have the metallic continuity. This is about the process. So, the, the range is so wide that uh, it allows very good uh, features to the joining. So, if we go by the advantages related with the joining processes, uh, it can it helps to make very large structures. It allows to develop the large structures like ship or big towers like Eiffel Tower is also one of the example where simpler shapes are joined together to make uh, a big tower. Uh, so, here what we do for fabrication of the ships, the simpler plates are joined together by welding to achieve the large size um, structures. Uh, another thing uh, it can make, uh, it can help to develop the joining of the similar and dissimilar, both similar and the dissimilar joints can be similar and dissimilar metals can be joined because there are examples like joining the paper with the metal or joining the like say steel with the aluminum or joining of the titanium with the 
aluminum. So, there are very uh, means the completely different kind of the metal systems can be joined using the suitable combination of the process whether it is chemical based like uh, the adhesives can be used or uh, like solid state joining process or the solid and liquid state joining process can be used as per the compatibility the suitable uh, kind of the process joining process can be selected to have the joint between any two uh, systems. So, large structures, so the good feature is that it uses the simple shapes to get the desired final products. Means this process is good for making those shapes which cannot be otherwise be realized through. Uh, the forming or the casting processes or the machining will uh, be uh, uneconomical. So, uh, that is the another side. So, coming to the advantages of the welding and allied processes, if you see here it helps to develop the large the welding processes helps to develop the large structures using simple shapes like ships and towers to develop the components which otherwise cannot be made using the other manufacturing processes uh, like it using the simple shapes we can make the components otherwise very easily more economically otherwise which will be difficult using the forming or casting processes and it allows the joining of the similar as well as dissimilar metals. Uh, joints can be stronger than the base metal. This is another good feature. We, if you are thinking that joint will be weaker, then the processes, even um, the fusion welding processes or uh, the solid state joining process, they may allow to have the connection between the two, which uh, will be much uh, even stronger than the the base metal. So, it will perform as good as the base metal except that in some cases heat affected zone is produced. So, that needs to be taken care of and there are various variants of the joining processes like liquid, solid and liquids and liquid solid variants as per the requirement the suitable variant can be selected. So, that the joint can be made. Uh, as far as the negative aspects are concerned, uh, especially when we use the deformation based processes or uh, the uh, fusion based processes, we find a region next to the, uh, the weld joint uh, which is called heat affected zone. This heat affected zone has the different microstructure and different mechanical properties and therefore, this uh, uh, sometimes this become the source of the weakness in the joint and therefore, this heat affected zone must be taken care of. The weld joint offers the heterogeneity in terms of the mechanical properties and the heat affected zone. As I said, the heat affected zone offer, uh, has the different structure and different properties. Sometimes the hardening of the heat affected zone takes place and sometimes even the softening of the heat affected zone occurs. Thin and thick sections need extra care in case of the welding. In thick sections lead needs the multi-pass processing which results in the very wide heat affected zone as well as thin sections uh, can lead to the melt through or increased distortion tendency of the thin sheets. The control of the weld pool becomes very difficult in case of the thick sections, thin sections. Uh, residual stresses uh, which is which are integral part of the uh, all types of the welding processes like mostly uh, it uh, is found residual stresses are found in the fusion welding processes which are very tensile in nature and these uh, promote uh, the failure in number of uh, adverse working conditions of the weld joints, increased corrosion tendency, color mismatch possibility and uh, the limited reliability and no sensitivity. We know that uh, all these features actually reduce the reliability of the weld joints. Uh, regenerative process is another category of the manufacturing process. These are, this is the newer category of the manufacturing process where in the complex shapes can be very easily produced. This process uh, is very e easy to use for manufacturing the simple shape products of very large in variety means the different geometrical features, the different dimensions can be easily made uh, because it uses the CAD CAM and rep rapid prototype principles for making 
the product and the, it uh, uh, offers very good response to the changing conditions of the market. So, as per the requirement of the demand uh, or as per the requirement of the market, designs can be modified and the volumes which are to be made uh, can be modified although it is used for very low volume production purpose, ability to deal with the dynamic demand for the variety of the products. Uh, but the limitations are like the process, these processes are not very matured as of now, uh, this process, uh, this category of the processes are limited to the plastic and the polymers and the whatever surfaces are generated, they have the ribbed surface features, surface finish is not that good and the initial investment on the systems which are needed for uh, this category of the process are very high. The process offers very limited uh, volume of the production and the initial cost or the cost of the product which are made using this is high. So, uh, here now I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation, I have talked about uh, the advantages associated with the common manufacturing processes and their limitations. The processes about which I have talked included like casting, forming, uh, machining, welding and regenerative processes. Thank you for your attention.